Hola, buenos dias. Uh, welcome again to day two of um, EVE Barcelona. I hope everybody had a good sleep and um, everyone who's here this morning, you'll be very lucky to experience something special because you will be talking about creating an exclusive accessible ecosystem. And I would like to welcome to the stage uh, Tracy Bowen, Cassie Lawrence, Mani Turnbull, have I pronounced it well? The very good. And uh, our moderator, Violeta Valcheva, who is the founder of NFT Barcelona. Enjoy, everyone. Good morning, everyone. It's, actually, it's a genuine grass. I was not expecting yeah, this. It's nice. So we were asked to actually take our shoes off, and it's, it's, a, it's a very beautiful ex uh, experience. Well, thank you so much for coming at 10 a.m. Uh, I can imagine that yesterday there was a lot of um, you know, partying going on inside events. And um, I'm very happy to have this, uh, hosting this panel with these amazing speakers. They have, uh, um, they're one of the four, uh, forerunners when it comes to inclusivity within the Web3 space. And um, I'm gonna give them opportunity to actually present themselves and to present their projects. Um, and how they actually, the projects align with the cyberpunk movement, which is all about inclusivity and sustainable, imagining a sustainable future, which is actually the thematics of, the, of this conference. So uh, we're gonna start with uh, you, uh, Mani. You can uh, talk about FortiDAO, you're the founder of it, and uh, what it is about, how you align with, um, why inclusivity is important for you, and what, what are the steps that actually go within it? The, oh yeah, we have a second mic. Gracias. <laughs> cool. Okay, yes. Hi, I'm Mani. I'm from New Zealand and I am a co-creator of Frothy Dao. Um, and been in the space for quite a while. Um, and what really triggered the, the urge to build Frothy um, with other amazing females uh, was looking at how community functions in Web3, essentially, and realizing that we still really wanted to um, put the emphasis back onto the humanness in, in the ecosystem. So what we do is we focus on community design and incentive design uh, for a whole range of projects. We're essentially, you could say, <clears throat> sorry, a service DAO. Uh, not sure how I, I feel about that term at the moment, but um, yeah, it's a, new, it's a new form of agency. So we can work with um, and plug into a lot of different projects. Um, and having come from uh, working in consensus back in the day, um, it's really cool to see how all the alumni there are cross-pollinating different projects and how many, how many um, different, uh, I guess, parts of the ecosystem we can plug into. So that's us. We are uh, all female. And what's been really amazing also is to bring newer um, recruits on board who have uh, not been in Web3 for, say, five years and are actually very fresh mm -hmm. and very uh, hungry to be part of this movement. Um, and we are, of course, decentralized, but a heavy skew on being New Zealanders, which is interesting because we're so isolated. And yet now, um, within this ecosystem, it's, it's really cool because it's uh, bringing in more geographical inclusivity as well. So yeah, that's me. Thank you so much. Cassie, you're next. Yeah, sure. So thank you for having me. I'm mic'd oh, up. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name's Cassie. I'm from England. Um, I actually recently joined the team at Women Rise. Um, for those of you that don't know, Women Rise is a NFT project. It's 10,000 uh, randomly generated and unique art pieces created by Maliha Abidi, who's the founder um, of Women Rise and an artist. Um, so it's a chance for people to own a unique artwork, but it's also um, kind of encouraging diversity in the women in the artworks are scientists, activists, um, artists um, from all around the world. Um, so we want to use art as a tool for storytelling. Um, that's our kind of main aim um, and to, to use that to, um, to kind of promote 
uh, girls' education and women's rights around the world. Um, so our main ambition is to focus on educational initiatives um, to help the 129 million girls that are out of school. Oh, wow. It's really impressive. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tracy Bowen. I'm the instigator of HerDAO. HerDAO is a woman-focused developer DAO, and we've only been going for about six, seven months, but we've managed to do a lot in that time. We do travel scholarships. We fund women to go to conferences because access is really important, and it's incredibly expensive most of the time to come to these places. So, you know, if we're really talking about inclusion, then we have to talk about the equitable kind of approach. We enter hackathons, we win a lot of them. We, <laughs> <laughs> we um, want to really support women. Not all, you, you know, it's not exclusive, but we concentrate on women to become founders. And then what we really would like is for women to become more investors. In, women need to invest in other women because this is another part of the equation that investment dollars that go to women are practically zero. It's like 2%, which is weird, right? Because, you know, women are like over half of the planet yeah. and we can't <laughs> get any money. So there's, and it can't be because there's no brilliant women, right? So there's a, a little problem there. So, you know, I think part of the way we're going to challenge that and change that is by creating more women founders, more women investors, and, you know, just generally supporting innovation and inclusion and diversity. And it's quite interesting because I've been in this space for a very, very long time now. Well, it feels like forever, but it's, it's only since 2013. But um, I like the way the Web3 space is championing this egalitarian, inclusive democratization of tech. Because before, if you, you know, like even like five years ago, if you would have said that you were doing a diversity project for women, it wouldn't have gone down very well. And um, we even start, I mean, I'm, I'm part of a group um, which was, well, I'm not going to mention the name. But we had women in there who said that they couldn't even say to their male colleagues that they were there because it was to do with, you know, fighting against patriarchy or something. Oh, no. It was weird, <laughs> right? So actually, even in the last couple of years, it's changed a lot. So, um, you know, I'm just glad. I'm just glad that we're on the right path. That's amazing. So coming back from that, um, so you would say that for Web3 space in general is like has a tendency to bring inclusivity a bit on a, you know, on a larger scale because you were saying right now that in the previous ex uh, examples you, you haven't seen it that it's more inclusive, right? And um, that being said, since I imagine that, I mean, I've been a, a while in the space and you've been also working with on your own projects. Uh, what is the current state of inclusivity within Web3? Do you, I mean, it, it, does it see that it, it evolves or it, where is it going? Like how, how do you see it right now as it, as it in at the moment? The inclusivity stage of, of us, of projects as well. Do you see that similar projects as yours are growing or do you collaborate with others? Yeah, uh, I'll start by saying what's, what's really cool to notice is that now, in 2022, uh, we're seeing a multiplicity of female-founded DAOs, I think, think. So that's just one important um, metric to hit on. And it's, it's definitely exciting because if I think back to, say, ETH Denver, one o'clock back, ETH Denver 2020, I was there with two friends, um, ex-teammates also from Consensus, and that was where we summoned Metagamma Delta as a DAO. And at that point, we were the first to do something in that realm. Like, hey, let's, let's create a DAO that's solely for women, founded by women, boom. Um, and that was actually sparked, just as a backstory, because Meta Cartel had come to us and they were like, yo, we need to be more diverse. And we're like, cool. <laughs> and <laughs> we can actually um, kind of create something from scratch that is designed with more intention so that we, you know, have the right um, foundational diversity kind of ethos at play rather than trying to put the band-aid on later. So anyway, that, that's, a, I think, 
um, important to reflect on because now, um, fast forward two years, we've got Huda, we've got Boys Club, we've got She Fight, we've got MGD still, we've got, like, there's, there's all of these other ones popping up and it's not competitive and it's actually very healthy to have more cross-pollination amongst the, the Femme for DAOs. So that part of the ecosystem feels very positive and very um, frothy for me right now. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I would say, I mean, speaking about the kind of NFT space in particular, um, that at the minute it still feels quite US centric, especially with the conferences. Um, so I would like to see more kind of outside of that, outside of the West. Uh, obviously, it's great to be here in Barcelona. Um, I think it's important to kind of raise uh, other voices as well. So, um, for example, at Women Rise, we um, have just recently launched a um, partnership with Voice HQ to work with uh, women from marginalized backgrounds to create their own NFT projects. So it's um, not just about people already in the space, it's bringing, bringing people in. Um, so yeah, that, that's really important to us, um, definitely. Um, in terms of, ne not to be the negative voice on the panel, but like mm -hmm. concerns that I have, um, as, you, as Tracy mentioned, definitely finance and like being able to access the space. Um, that's that's something we need to think about. Um, and also personal for me is that like, I'm quite new to the space. I think we all need to be aware um, of the, like people coming into it. It's loads of new technology. It's always changing and that's really exciting. That's why we all wanna be in the Web3 space, but that can be really daunting if you're just joining it, all these acronyms and words that you don't know. So just being aware and like making sure people can learn and feel welcome, definitely. Yeah, I agree with those two points. And um, yeah, the state, the state of, the state of inclusion is basically what we're talking about, right? And uh, yeah, there are a lot more women projects. There are a lot more inclusion and diversity projects. But I'm not sure how how much that's translating into women being in more leadership roles. It's still pretty much male heavy especially when you go to conferences, it's like, whatever we do, it's still like a drop in the ocean, to be honest with you, you know? Mm. Um, I think obviously there should be more resources and money in general put towards um, supporting more access for women. Um, but you know, it's better than it was. It, it, you know, there has been some progress, but you can't just get women in. Women have to be in, in leadership roles, in decision-making roles, and they have to be, you know, the ones maybe giving, giving the money or making the money or, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I think to double click on that, it's like how many female founded funds are we seeing in the space? I think that's like a yeah. big glaring uh, question, really. Mm -hmm. That goes to your point exactly. of like, okay, well, who's going to fund exactly. the women and, and tap into like the visions mm -hmm. of their projects? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's something that we need to concentrate on getting more women led funds going so we can give mo money to other women. So that will be coming to the next question. That will be one of the limitations that are actually happening within the space when it comes to like progressing inclusivity is the the lack of funds, basically, women, lack of leadership ro roles of women, try, I mean, being able to help other, other projects of inclusivity of women and not only, I mean, other marginalized communities. Um, what other, for example, limitations or uh, restrictions you have um, encountered within your own work, within your own projects that you think that uh, with the right resources, they could go a bit better. Uh, for example, Casey, what you were uh, mentioning that education, is education the key for like more women to join in? But then again, as you mentioned, we do need leadership roles. So maybe for having actual leaders, you need to have a, a different type of approach. So education might not be the, the only one. So what, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? One thing that springs to mind very um, clearly is the onboarding, so you've mentioned resources. And there are actually so many resources, it can sometimes be like resource overwhelm. There's mm. like so many discords, there's so many notions, there's so many Twitter handles to follow, there's yeah. a lot. Um, and so it's knowing how to filter and 
really pass between those and like have clearer onboarding um, funnels essentially. Mm. And that comes down to again, like I guess thinking about what um, like pedagogical initiatives work for females versus like people learn in different ways. We're all different styles of learners. Um, and the way that females learn and interact like needs to be taken into account. Um, not to say we're like radically different from like from how guys would learn, but you know, there's there's nuances there. So and it's understanding like the that that journey. Basically it's it's coming down to like UX of onboarding. Um, so I think that's a really key thing. Uh, it's not necessarily a lack of resources. It's it's tuning into like how the resources are being offered out and engaged with. Um, I see as a as a key thing. Yeah, I, I would agree. So for when we launched Women Rise, um, we did a survey afterwards and found that forty percent of the people that had uh, minted with us. It was their first ever NFT, uh, which we were really proud of. Um, and that was through the team literally like setting up Zoom calls one on one with people in different time zones and talking them through like how to create a wallet, how to mint an NFT. Because mm -hmm. to a lot of people, um, I was listening to the panel yesterday about the traditional art, worth, art world. There was someone from Christie's um, and she was saying people like, oh, it's really interesting, but no, like there's too much tech, it's too overwhelming and um, so to do it on a person by person and community level and um, mm. I think that's really important. Mm. So <clears throat> Huda are actually expanding quite rapidly so like the main DAO actually isn't even fully formed yet but we're still simultaneously raising other uh, DAOs in other locations so we're starting in Latin, Latin America uh, we're launching that for East Mexico, where we'll, we'll have a hacker house full of like 30 women uh, in Mexico City, which is super cool. We're yeah. also launching in Korea. So Korea Blockchain Week, we'll, we'll be launching Herdao Korea because they're uh, the kind of the women web free movement isn't so, you know, strongly formed. And so I think we can do a lot of work there. We'll be also starting in Nigeria. We're going to work with programs like mm -hmm. Women uh, Mums Who Code. This is this is a great thing, you know. So mums are learning how to code. They're coming from Web two to Web three to be able to support their families, mm -hmm. which cool. is fantastic. So we're going to be um, doing a, a, a boot camp and a hackathon with them, and um, you know. Heard our Caribbean as well, but you know, it's, it, it's that general theme of we want women to be builders because if we want the future to look like us, then we have to build it, mm. right? And so that was the main driver of Herdow um, because I was building um, data unions at the time actually, and I wanted to build more diverse teams, and it was it was more difficult than it should have been to find, you know, non-male white participants. Um, and then I kind of stopped doing that. And I thought I need to concentrate on building a diverse developer pipeline. But in that, we, we kind of have like a holistic view of what a developer or a builder is. So a builder is like anyone who contributes to a project. So even though Herdow are technically a is technically a developer DAO, but we have artists, we have writers, we have people people, we have basically, we believe in a holistic team. Mm. And so if you have a holistic team, then you'll probably make a great product. So, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to move that on. And it's also worth saying that sustainability in Web3 is a big thing, not just environmentally, but personally for women like you know I basically work all the time I travel you know I'm going to leave here and go straight to the airport <laughs> right I'll, I'll be going to Vancouver and then like a couple of days later I'll be in New, New York and a couple of days later, later I'll be in Paris it's unsustainable I'm like I've been on the road for like six months I'm barely ever anywhere you know um, and 
a lot of a lot of women can't do that women with children can't do that and so like we have to kind of change this expectation that you always have to be on the road you always have to be on there there needs to be kind of some balance and sustainability in terms of uh health for women it's amazing oh, sorry i just wanted to go back to what you were saying about um building and like having women build in the space and that's obviously so important. I don't know if anyone's read um, Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez. Um, she's got some great like real life examples and by great, I mean terrible, obviously, um, of, of systems and software being built um, and just not considering like the range of people that will be using the software. So um, there was an example about um, like a CV and a software that could assess CVs so that it could go out of hiring managers' hands. Um, they looked at who was successful in the company before and then they would input CVs that they were getting in um, and because people in the company that had been successful were men, it started to just automatically uh, disregard any female CVs that came in. Wow. Um, wow. So that, like, that demonstrates quite clearly why you need diverse people in the space to begin with. Um, otherwise, even if, if it's unconscious bias, it's going to come in. Um, so you have to be aware of that. Yeah. Hey, what you were just saying? about the sustainability point and the, um, I guess the lifestyle sustainability piece, I think is super key. But to your question on like how inclusive is it? Um, and at Frothy, we're thinking a lot about this. Actually today, I'll just plug this because this is super on point. Uh, 3.30, we're doing a workshop um, with a couple of other DAOs, Mochi and uh, Colonel in regards to how we can um, come up with more, I guess, solutions to this, to this exact point, which is um, mental fitness and well-being within DAOs, because it's all very well saying, oh, cool, I'm contributing to so many DAOs. I'm so into this and um, activated. And also, like, okay, cool, so what's the burnout rate? Um, and as you're saying with females, it's particularly potent because of all of the extra responsibilities that might uh, be be um, present, whether that's motherhood, whether that's yeah. all, all of the other things. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that's an incredibly pertinent point mm -hmm. that we all need to consider yeah. and really mm -hmm. like speak to. Um, otherwise, there's going to be a whole bunch of awesome females in the space just not thriving and yeah. not operating at, at the at the frequency that we could be. Yeah, a lot of people are burnt out, actually. Like 50% exactly. yeah. of women are burnt out already because, you know, um, but that's why we're going to do, um, we're actually going to do a, a whole um, internal sort of, well, well, not internal, but it's called Hurcon. So we did our first Hurcon in Amsterdam, which mm -hmm. was like, a, it was an on-conference space where women could just, you know, ideate and talk about what they need to do and strategic kind of building um just you know just like space to do stuff because we don't really need another panel actually <laughs> we don't really need like any more conferences to be honest but i mean i don't to be honest but um uh, <laughs> nice. it's just I think the main thing is that we connect. No, but it's just like when you go to a conference, the best times I have is out in the hallway, in the lobby, talking, talking, talking to people. Yeah. You know, I'm not really sat in a chair, do, you know, to li li listen to speakers. Um, but we're actually going to have a Huracan in Bali um, as a hybrid retreat and hackathon. And we're going to hack on Web3 and wellness. Mm. Right, and so oh. yeah. Is this going to be at? This is going to be in Bali. This, oh. uh, yeah, yeah. So we're going to release the details later, but um, but we're we're hoping to have people come in, but we're also hoping to energize the local community because there's quite a big actually crypto community in Bali, and mm. a lot of them are women. Yeah. Um, yay. <laughs> 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 so so I'm hoping to um, make that a thing where where we can we can have retreats and we can hack as well but you know you can hack with ideas you don't really always have to have your computer out as no. well um but yeah so it, i i think it is about you know i think what what we're all really trying to do is trying to push the culture along a bit like change it from this quite toxic 
you know, work, yeah. work, work. Um, it's like the, it's the carryover of the web to hustle, yeah. hustle, hustle culture yeah, 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 yeah. vibe, which we doesn't don't need, need to we don't need flow in, yeah. in the same direction. Just get rid of it. <laughs> just get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like, you know, it's all these healthy um, cultural shifts going on, you know, and I think that's the value of bringing more people, diverse people into the space. I mean, a lot of people will just think diversity is like a, a really nice thing to do, you know, or they just think you're woke or something like that. It's actually none of those things, really, to be honest with you, is, is actually essential, you know, apart from there being a big body of evidence to say that the more diverse your team is, you'll probably make better decisions. You'll probably make better products. You'll probably earn more money. It, it will probably be a nicer place to work. You know, like, what is there not to love? I mean, if you're like a modern forward thinking person, especially a business person, it's gonna be like the best decision you're ever gonna make, business decision. But you know, um, some people aren't convinced by it, but do you wanna be on the wrong side of history in 10 years time when everyone's, you know, made loads of money and like, you know, these paragons of, of great business, do you wanna be on the other side of that? I don't know, you know, so. I think it's for everybody. It's, it's not really just for the woke crew. <laughs> exactly. I think that's such an old point that they were just made. They were so on point, specifically because I, the more inclusive it becomes and the more sustainable, it's really good that you mentioned sust sustainability, it's going to be also better just for everyone. And the, the second point that you just mentioned, um, how inclusivity is not about, you know, doing good for, I mean, that's also part of it, but at the end of the day, the more diverse um, thinking you have, different experience, background, people from different parts of, they could bring something unique to the space. And when you have unique ideas, it moves forward and it's innovative and sustainable. So uh, to recap, just to, so better education, which is more individualized, as you, you both mentioned. So it's not about just one model fits all and then making more sustainable and wellness uh, decisions and, you know, changing the ecosystem. And of course, yeah, more interactive and immersive experiences, as you mentioned, the hackathon in Bali. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I could speak for everyone here right now. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think that being said, what we're just thinking about, and we all speak about community within Web3 space, right? That's like a, the key word for us. It's all about building community, coming up together. And that's really important because that's all about what DAOs are and NFT as well, you know, big projects that women rise, the world of women. It's really about, you know, belonging and there's a strong storytelling behind it. I mean, even when it comes to uh, design and branding and everything. I'm also curious to what are your thoughts on what an, an individual can actually, um, in, you know, support for a more inc inclusive ecosystem. What kind of decisions and what kind of steps, more practical one, maybe you know, for the audience and for um, they could take to actually contribute. There could be also smaller ones, whether it's about following, joining a DAO, maybe not joining a DAO. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? More from an individualistic perspective. I mean, I think everyone could check their networks, check their environment. So like, if you work somewhere and you know it's probably not that inclusive or not that diverse, you could kind of take small steps to maybe bring that to the fore, you know? Uh, that's a good thing. Um, also, just get more, different people, just get more diverse people in leadership roles. Like, you need them, you know? Um, fund people like her now. <laughs> um, but no, seriously though, you know, we need, we need investment dollars. But I think we, we can actually do this for ourselves, you know? It's not necessarily just, we're not like begging people for money, you know? It's like, we can, we can set up these, um, investment funds or create our own economies, but it'd be much better if people just help us, you know? Um, so it's kind of being aware about what value diversity can bring and um, just recognizing what, what we need. Um, 
But yeah, we could also not do so many conferences in mega cities where it's super expensive. We could do that. Um, I think I think that's happening a little bit. I think there's going to be um, some things happening in India, um, some some more things happening in Latin America. Uh, not enough is happening in the Caribbean. I mean, I don't think crypto Bahamas counts because it was like water war VCs. Yeah. So I yeah. don't think that counts um, as inclusive. But but yeah, so just 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 little things like that. To be honest, I think. I almost expected you to then go into the um, the uh, multi multi age aspect because yeah. yeah. um, we were talking about that yeah. Yeah. prior yeah. to the panel. Um, that is a key thing, for sure, and it goes from um, literally primary to I would say like retirement age at the moment. Because if you look around all of these ETH global events, it's very um, mono age, I guess. And that's not inclusive. Um, and like to your point about the parenting, yes, I've seen some like pop up child um, child spaces, for example, at ETH Denver. But on the whole, that's that's quite nuanced and rare. Mm -hmm. So it's bearing that in mind and figuring out, okay, what are the best tactics to jump into schools or high schools or universities, etc. And be sharing this movement amongst more than just 20 and 30 year olds. Hmm. Yeah, and I think also, um, like we've talked a lot about diversity and inclusivity, but we have to think about like accessibility as well. Like 15% of the world has some kind of disability, um, and how can we make sure that they're comfortable in the space? Like they might not physically be able to attend conferences. Um, are we doing enough um, kind of online stuff? Um, you know, I don't have. All the answers, but uh, it's something that we need to consider um, for sure. Other than that, I would, it's not revolutionary, but just joining communities that, that you feel represent you um, and making sure that your voice is heard. And if, if you feel like there isn't something that represents you, then, then build it, because <laughs> that's what it's about. Indeed. Yeah, I think um, especially the point about uh, you know expanding the space and going to actually different cities different countries which uh, i think now in africa they're organizing ETH kenya um now in bali is happening so f what it, when we spoke about inclusivity now we're mostly focusing on women because we also you know um the projects that you are involved with it's it's about empowering them but really inclusivity is about everyone because the more Let's, I mean, innovation comes through, you know, solving problems and a problem of sustainable and uh, inclusive ecosystem is still there, obviously. So those problems, if they're out to be solved um, or to be improved, at least, they will be beneficial for everyone. Right. I mean, it's not only for for women within the space. Um, I just want to go back a bit uh, regarding leadership roles, because I think it's all well you know, on the communal level, how women co come together and we can, you know, education and what. But um, leadership roles, especially whether it's uh, within more institutional structures or within the Web3 itself, um, they're very little still. So um, is it something that we need actively to educate women on, you know, to be um, maybe within the hackathon, for example, is it like, okay, uh, it's about ideas, right? So how you can actually lead on how you can create your own project, how you can empower others. and. Um, I think that will be something really key for us um, as a community as a whole to actually bring more uh, within the table. So um, I kind of like to recap because I want to leave some, some space for questions from the audience to, to make it a bit more inclusive, as you mentioned, not to have just us four talking. Um, um, so how do you see, and like, I, I won't say ideally, but like, let's say ideally utopian way of how Web3 space and inclusive would look like. And that I think that also um, applies for every day. So it is about, yeah, I mean, do you think it's more like a collaborative process? Is it something that uh, you wish you would want to improve or like expand within your area, within your, your project? If you were to have, you know, um, more resources and more opportunities and more, um, more, more support in general from the space. Um, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, we met, obviously, it's kind of stuff we've already touched on, but um, as we were saying, in different cities, and also, I think, um, important to have conferences and um, talks in languages other than English, um, you know, just to, so that as many people as possible are involved. Obviously, there's the Spanish language strand here, which is really great, um, so I think we need more of that. Um, yep. Um, point. Do you think that education is key to that, or is there something else that is maybe missing? Because education maybe is a bit of a slow process, maybe something, I don't know, maybe you have more thoughts on that. Yeah, well, I think education is quite a wide term. It doesn't have to be, you know, this is how you do this lesson yeah. by lesson, but I know her dad do like a mentorship scheme that bring women into the space. So that's, you know, that's a form of education, um, anything that kind of opens it up. Mm. Mm. I think going back to the leadership piece, it's so, so key that we have more role modeling because how else are the next gen of, or the next wave of females entering going to have those models unless there's some clear like examples. Mm. Um, and that goes for web too as well. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> so we sound like a stuck record really, like <laughs> all females in, in, this, in this sentiment because it's like, yo, this has been an issue for decades. Um, so I guess, yes, there's that element of like, okay, just keep plugging away at this um, and get as many um, up-leveled uh, themes in, in these key positions happening. Um, and then also on the recruitment side, like not recruiting from the same funnel, clearly. Mm. Um, age diverse, region diverse, language diverse, um, skill set diverse, like even getting like very fresh, um, more creative leaning uh, experience um, plugging in in a big way is already making a difference. And so that's only gonna happen more um, as, as more convergences happen basically between the tech and the creative and culture sides. Um, and empowering as much as possible because that's a key thing. Like we could give Hood out um, females, for example, all the resources possible, but unless they feel really empowered to, to run with that um, and also like capable, and that relates to the wellness piece as well. Like if you're not like emotionally and, and mentally there, then, then the resources aren't worth it. So. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of elements at play to making sure that women feel like they can plug in and, and really thrive. Um, yeah. yeah. I think more or less was the, as you mentioned, we are bringing points from, but I think it's also always good to actually um, repeat some of the points because at the end of the day, um, there's a lot of um, channels that we go, and I think the, what you mentioned about the recruitment channels, you know, know where to, what kind of people you can burden into your project and all that, it's very key. Um, I'm just gonna take the last um, five-ish minutes um, to address the audience if they have any questions. I think um, what uh, Tracy mentioned that um, it's actually good to not have just like, um, you know, talk between us. Um, and if you have any questions for specifically for them, for the projects and how you would like to, for example, how you can take part and all of that, uh, feel free to, there's one or two. Oh, you can, yeah. I, I just want to uh, imagine for a minute with you, if you can, how's the ecosystem going to look like when it's going to be fully diverse? So just like not technically, but like like really in-depth meaning to diversity and what potential it brings? Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the ideal is that literally anyone that wants to enter the space can um, and anyone that wants to, to take a leadership role can and that there'll already be, you know, every, pers every type of person already in the space. Um, so that we won't need diversity panels, it'll already be there. Yeah, I, I totally agree, you know, success for us means that Hurdao doesn't exist, basically. Um, and we have 50-50 
gender balance hackathons. There's no obstacles. You have all the support and resources you need to fulfill your creative technical goals. I mean, you know, it's just easy stuff, right? <laughs> so yeah, that is the vision. That is the vision. Do you want the mic? Um, <laughs> One metric, one metric we can use is the toilet line. Like that's been the meme for a while, but like literally having the longer line of women at events <laughs> outside the bathroom would be great. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. <laughs> also, I, I meant I meant in essence, like what essence does women bring that will shift um, the ecosystem? That's what I meant. Like you, you understand. Mm. Like right now, we're not the majority. We're not leaders. We're not financed enough. But mm. how the ecosystem will look like? Like how? How is it going to like essentially shift the way that we think, the way we create? That's what I meant. Mm. That's a good question because I think that leans into okay, what are the um, like masculine, feminine elements of of the space? Um, how does that translate to humanness on different levels? Also, like, how does that translate to um, the degree to which we think about regenerative practices? And I think right now we're seeing that, like a bleeding of the of the crypto and climate worlds, um, and that's really that's really really positive. And we're seeing this even in the context right now of um, East Barcelona and the focus on solar punk and what does that mean for regenerative thinking. And how is that like influencing the mindsets of, of builders and creators in, in the ecosystem right now? Uh, I would say I hope that with more feminine led and feminine integrated um, thinking, we're going to have more, mm, I guess, like human slash regeneration orientated um, ventures being built. Um, and I don't think we're necessarily, we haven't got a ton of examples yet because it's still like nascent and it's still building, but it's happening. Uh, and I'm really excited for what that future looks like um, and how it's, it's, it's kind of coming back to a remembrance of the humanness at the, at the bottom of all of this. Well, first, congrats for, for the projects and all the work you are putting to, you know, empower women. That's amazing. I, I guess my question is, <clears throat> in your opinion, what men can do to, I don't know if to use the word support or embrace or, or foster more this type of initiative? Like, as you said, half of the population is women, half of the population are men. And I guess if we work together somehow, it will go faster. So I would love to know your opinion from a women's point of view what men can we do to support that uh, to happen? Um, I, I guess that's the question. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, I think men can help other men change their attitudes. I mean, I don't think sexism is a women's problem. I think it's a men's problem. So like, you know, if you guys could do that work, that would be great. <laughs> 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 you know. Um, and yeah, just free up those dollars. I mean, like, why is it, <laughs> why, why is it that only 2% of women founders get any funding? Like there's something wrong there. So maybe you guys can look at that as well. Um, so that's two things that you could do. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, um, <laughs> similar, similar points. I mean, obviously it's great, great to have you here to ask that question, to be an ally, an ally. I think that's really important. It's a good first step, but uh, just needs to support women into leadership roles. If, you, if you're in a leadership role yourself as a man, um, to, you, know, you can have male mentors. Um, I've had you know, supportive male roles in my life. Um, so yeah, same. <laughs> Thank and you. also like founding team dynamics, not plugging in FEMS as an afterthought, like, cool, we've got our dude builder squad. And now we'll just plug in some some women to show the diversity stats tick, but actually having that at the formation at the genesis point is really key. 
Nice. I think we are off Thanks. time. Sorry. Uh, you can definitely speak with our speakers afterwards. Thank you so much for for uh, for this amazing panel. And uh, we need to wrap it up. I was being instructed to keep it short, <laughs> 45 minutes. But uh, please do uh, you know connect with the speakers, ask them more questions like this one. And yeah, thank you so much for the listening. Thanks.